Hi students, this is Mahesh Reddy. In this class, I am going to deal about memory types. What are different types of memories available? Before going to memory types, I want to brief you about what you mean by a memory module. See, a memory module is a physical device which is used to store programs and data on temporary or permanent basis for use in digital electronics. What is a memory module? A memory module is a physical device which is used to store programs and data on a temporary or permanent basis for use in digital electronics. And coming to the memory types, we can divide memory into two categories mainly primary memory and secondary memory. See here. A primary memory means the memory which is present within the system and needed to the CPU processing element is called as a primary memory. It may be temporary or permanent. And secondary memory refers to the external storage element which is a permanent memory which is used for storing the data. And coming to primary memory, the primary memory can be divided again into two categories. ROM and RAM. Here ROM indicates read only memory. RAM means random access memory. I hope that you know about ROM and RAM as you previously studied in MPMC and CO and computer organization. Again I want to brief you about ROM, RAM and different types of ROM and RAM available. First of all, what is ROM? ROM is also called as a program memory. Program memory or read only memory. This memory is used to store the firmware. Firmware means here software in embedded systems. As this ROM is a permanent memory. ROM can only be used to read from but cannot be written upon. We can only read the data from the ROM. We cannot write the data to the ROM. Always we need it. But nowadays flash memories are available. We can write the content when we need it. The flash memories also comes into ROM category. And these memory devices are non-volatile. That means which retains its contents even if the power is switched off. Um, the ROM can store instructions which are required to start computer when power is given to the computer. This operation is also called as an bootstrap. And coming to different types of ROM, these are the different types of ROM we are having. Masked ROM, PROM, EPROM, EEROM, and flash memory. First one, masked ROM, MROM. Masked ROM makes the use of hardwired technology for storing data. These special types of ROMs are programmed by masking and metallization process at the time of production itself. And these are programmed according to the data provided by the end user. The advantage of this uh, MROM is that this is a low cost, high volume production and it is good for storing the embedded firmware for low cost embedded devices. And the disadvantage is that we cannot modify the device firmware that is uh, the code which is programmed previously against firmware updates. This is one of the disadvantage of MROM. Next PROM, programmable read-only memory. Unlike masked ROM, programmable read-only memory is not pre-programmed by the manufacturer. The end user is responsible for the programming these devices. Who is responsible? The end user is responsible for programming PROMs. These programmable ROMs can be modified only once by the user and hence it is called one-time programmable memory. This PROM is also called as an OTP. OTP means one-time programmable memory. 
the program is manufactured with a series of fuses when programming here fuses are burnt the open fuses are read as logic 1 here while the burnt fuses are read as logic 0 the disadvantage of this theorem is that it is not useful for development purpose because in development we have to reprogram the memory always but these PROMs are not useful for development purpose. Next one, EEPROM, Erasable Programmable Read-Only Memory. On this Erasable Programmable Read-Only Memory, the type of memory in which we can program any number of times and it can retain contents until exposed to ultraviolet rays, ultraviolet light. The ultraviolet light erases its contents and so that it makes possible to reprogram the memory. And in order to erase and write EEPROMs, we need a special device called EEPROM programmer. Otherwise, we cannot uh, program this EEPROMs. Next, EEPROM. See, as the name indicates, the information contained in the EEPROM can be altered by using electrical signals. What signals? Electrical, with help of electrical signals, we can erase the data in the EEPROM at the register or byte level. The EEPROM data is stored and removed one byte of data at a time. We can store one byte and remove one byte at a time with the help of electrical signals. These types of memory devices are used in computers and other electronic devices to store small amount of data. And then flash memory. Uh, now we are using flash memories. Memory cards are also flash memories. Flash memory is the latest and most popular ROM technology used in today's embedded design. Flash memory is a variation of EEPROM technology. It combines the reprogrammability of EEPROM and the high capacity of standard ROMs. The storage and erasing of data in this flash memories is faster compared to other memories. And this flash memory keeps its data even when there is no power at all. And coming to NVRAM, NVRAM means non-volatile RAM. This non-volatile RAM is a random access memory with battery backup. With battery backup means it contains a minute battery for providing supply to the memory in the absence of external power supply. So, if there is no external power supply, it will operate on the battery and retains the contents. The memory and battery are packed together in a single package here. This NVRAM is used for non-volatile storage of results or operations of lags, etc. On coming to lifetime, the lifetime of NVRAM is expected to be around 10 years. This NVRAM lifetime is 10 years. On coming to RAM, random access memory, we can divide RAM into two categories, static RAM and dynamic RAM. On coming to static RAM, the static random access memory module is a type of RAM that retains the data bits in its memory as long as power supply is being supplied. And this static RAM stores data in the form of voltage and they are made up of flip-flops. What they are present in the static RAM? Flip-flops are present in the static RAM. And the typical implementation of static RAM is realized using six MOSFETs. How many MOSFETs are required? Six MOSFETs. Four of the transistors are used for building the latch, the lift flip flop, part of memory cell, and two transistors are used for controlling the axis. Understand? Among the six MOSFETs, four of the transistors are used for building the part of memory cell, which is used for storage. And the remaining two is used for controlling the operations such as reading and writing operations. Next, dynamic RAM, DRAM. The dynamic random access memory is also a type of RAM module which stores each bit of data within a separate capacitor. 
listen here in dram capacitor is used for storing the information and this is an efficient way to store the data in memory because it requires less physical space to store the data dynamic ram stores data in the form of charge because capacitors are used for storing data no so data is stored in the form of charge these dynamic rams are made up of mosfet and a capacitor each dram cell is referred to as a bit when a dram cell holds a value at a active state 1 and it holds zero in inactive state but the disadvantage of dram is that this dram need to be constantly recharged to keep its charge this is the reason why dram requires more power compared to sram and coming to difference sram consumes less power and dram consumes more power you said no and this sram provides faster access to the data dram provides slow in operation due to refresh requirements mostly so by the, for this reason mostly srams are preferred than the dram and coming to nvram i previously discussed about nvram in rom session that nvram means non volatile random access memory which uses battery for retaining the content and uh, coming to secondary memory secondary memories can be divided into sequential memory and random memory and in this coming to sequential memories your magnetic tapes and gram phone recorders comes into sequential memories which stores data sequentially magnetic tapes which are used in tape recorders see you no know, magnetic tapes stores data sequentially in a tape and it also plays the data sequentially same way the gram phone recorders also and coming to random memory your cds compact disc dvds hard disk floppy disk memory cards these are all 